Hello everyone, my name is Miss Marilyn and welcome to Storytime. We're going to go ahead and get started the way we always do by shaking our sillies out. Are you guys ready? We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're going to clap, clap, clap our crazies out, clap, clap, clap our crazies out, clap, clap. Clap our crazies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna stomp, stomp, stomp our stompies out. Stomp, stomp, stomp our stompies out. Stomp, stomp, stomp our stompies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, and wiggle our waggles away. Good job, thanks for singing along with me, guys. Well, today, we are gonna read stories about dragons. I have a dragon friend with me today, and our first story is called, Dragons Love Tacos. Hey kid, did you know that dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They really love big gigantic tacos and they like tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Well, maybe it's the smell of the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. Either way, if you want to make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey dragon, why do you guys love tacos so much? Mm -hmm. But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa and spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons cannot stand it. Why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot, so hot sauce makes a dragon's ears smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles. And when dragons get the tummy troubles, oh boy. If you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild, like tomatoes, lettuce, and cheese. These are all good toppings for tacos for dragons. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Ooh, says the dragon. Dragons love parties. They like costume parties and pool parties. They like big gigantic parties with accordions and tiny little parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe it's the conversation. Maybe it's the dancing. Maybe it's the comforting sound of a good friend's laughter. The only thing dragons love more than parties or tacos is taco parties. Taco parties are parties with lots of tacos. If you want to have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need buckets of tacos, pants loads of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos. That's about how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. After all, dragons love tacos. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? I think he's excited. Just remember, dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all of the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard and hope that the dragons can't find it. These dragons love your taco party. They love the music, they love the decorations, and they especially love the tacos. Congratulations. Oh, it's a good thing you got rid of all of that spicy. Wait a second. What are those little green things in the salsa? Didn't you read the fine print? It's totally mild salsa, now with <gasps> spicy jalapenos. 
Dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos. Those little green specks in the salsa, they are jalapeno peppers. They are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love these tacos. Do not let the dragons eat those tacos. Oh no! Crunch, crunch, crunch. <gasps> Too late! Oh, oh no. Everything burned. Why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. Because remember, dragons love tacos. The end. Do you guys like tacos? I like tacos. Maybe I'm part dragon. Hmm. Well, in the meantime, we're gonna do a little rhyme with my little dragon friend right here. And this one is called Dragon, Dragon, Turn Around. So I want you guys to follow the actions that the dragon is doing. So first up, dragon, dragon, turn around. Turn around, good job. Dragon, dragon, touch the ground. You reach down and touch. Dragon, dragon, fly up high. Dragon, dragon, touch the sky. Dragon, dragon, swing your tail. Dragon, dragon, shake your scales. Dragon, dragon, give a roar. And dragon, dragon, sit on the floor. Good job, dragon. Well, if you guys are sitting down, that means it's time for another story about dragons. And this one is called Attack of the Underwear Dragon. Cole had always wished he could be an assistant knight to Sir Percival, his favorite knight in King Arthur's round table. So Cole wrote him a letter Dear Sir Percival, I would make a great assistant knight because I am smart, I work hard, and whatever I don't know, I promise to learn. Please give me a shot. Love, Cole. Sir Percival read Cole's letter and cried. That's right, knights cry. Knights cry at sad plays and bad plays, when they step on something sharp, or when they run into a harp, when they cut onions, oh, or when they get bunions when they get stuck on castle ceilings, or when a wizard hurts their feelings. But Sir Percival cried because he had once written a letter to his favorite knight, Sir Lancelot, who had given him a shot. So Sir per Percival made Cole his assistant knight. Cole had a lot to learn. He learned how to sharpen Sir Percival's swords, his spears, his battle axes, and his knight pencils. He learned how to ride a horse, how to swing a sword, and how to paint Sir Percival doing awesome knight poses. And to calm Sir Percival down when he awoke from nightmares about a big, scary underwear dragon. Cole learned how to get knocked off a horse, how to get knocked down by a knight, how to get knocked down by a princess, and how to get knocked out by a catapult. At battle time, Cole learned how to pack Sir Percival's stuff, lug it to battle, and cheer for Sir Percival when battle began, and how to bandage his boo-boos when it was all over. Cole loved learning what made Sir Percival a great knight, even if Sir Percival was terrified of a uh, underwear dragon who would come and ruin the entire kingdom. <sighs> that sounds scary. Oh no, unfortunately, an underwear dragon came by and destroyed the entire kingdom. All the knights fought the underwear dragon and all the knights lost. And pretty soon, there was only one knight left, Sir Percival. But pretty soon, there were no knights left. So Cole wrote another letter. Dear underwear dragon, it read, I am only an assistant knight of the round table, but I think you should clean up the mess you made because it's not nice to mess up a kingdom that does not belong to you. I can help if you want. Love, Cole. 
the underwear dragon got Cole's letter and ate it. That's right, underwear dragons can't read. Underwear dragons can't read letters, jester sweaters, billboards, signs for gill swords, party invitations, poems about crustaceans, royal decrees, bath oil recipes, moat signs, goat kinds, menus, words written with 10 U's, or even maps that hens use. The underwear dragon went to eat coal next. When Cole saw the underwear dragon, he was scared. And then the underwear dragon attacked, and Cole didn't think he would be able to do anything. But then Cole remembered everything he'd learned from being an assistant knight. He fought, Boop. he jousted, he wrestled, and he catapulted the underwear dragon until <laughs> his underwear flew off. <gasps> and then, so did the dragon. I bet he was pretty embarrassed. The whole kingdom cheered and helped Cole clean up the mess the underwear dragon had made. They even made a funny sign that said, thank you, Cole. Back at his castle, King Arthur made Cole a knight and gave him a place at the round table. But Sir Cole just wanted to get some rest. Because tomorrow, he needed to find his own assistant knight of the round table. The end. Looks like all of Cole's training paid off. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and sing a song. And for this song, I actually brought some stuff with me. I brought a shaky egg. I brought some rhythm sticks. And I brought a little scarf. So I'm gonna go ahead and sing a song with using these. If you have those at home, great. If you wanna use something else, also great. But this is a song you can sing at home. So this is called We Wiggle and Stop. So first, we wiggle and wiggle and stop. We wiggle and wiggle and stop. We wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and stop. Hmm, what could we do next? Hmm. We clap and we clap and we stop. We clap and we clap and we stop. We clap and 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 we stop. Hmm. What about? Can we wave our scarves around? We wave and we wave and we stop. We wave and we wave and we stop. We wave and 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 we stop. Let's get our shaky eggs ready. Ooh, this sounds fun. We shake and we shake and we stop. We shake and we shake and we stop. We shake and 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 we stop. One more, what do we left? What was it? Ah, our rhythm sticks, that's right. We tap and we tap and we stop. We tap and we tap and we stop. We tap and 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 we stop. Good job. Now you guys could do that with some other motions too. You could jump up and down, you could wiggle around, you could tap your toes, you could do all sorts of things. You can make that song your own. Well now it's time for another story. And this story is called, Look Out, It's a Dragon. Sapphire wasn't like other dragons. She didn't want to crash castles or capture princesses, and sitting on cold rocky mountains just hurt her bottom. That's it, said Sapphire, I'm off. She searched far and wide until she found a sunny place filled with trees. Hello neighbors, beamed Sapphire, landing with a whoosh in a field full of flowers. Oh, look out, it's a dragon, cried the other animals, run! Oh, don't run away, it's so nice here. <sighs> Sapphire sighed happily, wriggling around in the long, soft grass. But from behind her, a little voice squeaked. Hey, you're squishing me, you can't stay here. Oh, but I love it, Sapphire replied. Why can't I stay? Because you're a dragon, Mouse exclaimed. And we know what dragons do. They chase us around with their fiery flames. Well, not me, said Sapphire. I'm a friendly dragon. 
Look! And she picked a little snack for Mouse. Thank you, squeaked Mouse, a little surprised. But just then, Sapphire's nose began to itch. And a chew! <laughs> Sapphire sneezed an enormous sneeze and accidentally singed Warbler's tail. Eek! squeaked Mouse. Ah! cried the Warbler. I've been scorched by a dragon and now it's coming after me! Sapphire swooped after the songbird. Please come back, you've got it wrong. I just want to be your friend. But Warbler didn't stop. So Sapphire followed her and crash, smash, and splinter toppled birds from their treetops. Ah! The animals cried. A dragon is wrecking our homes! Enough was enough. Stop, you lungering beast! bellowed Mouse. You can't live here. Leave us alone! Sapphire's ears drooped and she shuffled away. It was a perfect home, she sniffled. Good riddance, mu muttered Mouse, and the animals settled down for a nap. But as they slept, eerie shadows crept in. Closer and larger the shadows loomed, and then... <gasps> Look at all of those dragons! Sizzle, scorch, and singe! The animals scattered this way and that, chased by fiery, scary dragons. Help! they cried. Somebody help us! And somebody did. Whoosh! Nobody hurts my friends, cried Sapphire, swooping in and chasing off the dragons. Thank you, Sapphire, the animals cheered. We're so sorry we told you to leave. But their home was scorched. We can't stay here, said Mouse. So Sapphire took off and searched far and wide until she found a happy new home for all of them. It's perfect, the animals cried. And it was. There was sunshine and flowers and space for everyone, even the biggest of friends. The end. Be pretty nice to have a friend like Sapphire, huh? Well, I brought a couple of dragon friends with me, but they're not quite as big as she was. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some counting. So there was one little dragon with scales of blue. Well, that dragon ran into a green friend, and then there were two. One, two. Two little dragons sitting under a tree. The pink dragon joined them. And then there were three. One, two, three. Three little dragons wishing there were more. Along came a yellow one. And then there were four. One, two, three, four. Four little dragons happy to be alive. Along came a red dragon, and then there were five. One, two, three, four, five. Five little dragons all came out to play. Watch out, they breathe fire, is all I have to say. There we go, we've got five more dragon friends, and they can go ahead and listen to our last story. And this story is called, The Crocodile Who Didn't Like Water. I thought we were reading dragon stories. Once upon a time, there was a little crocodile. And this little crocodile didn't like water. Hmm. He longed to play with his brothers and sisters, but they were all far too busy with the swim club. And this little crocodile didn't like swim club. What he really liked was climbing trees but nobody else did. It was lonely having nobody to play with, so the little crocodile made a decision. He saved up his money from the tooth fairy, and he knew exactly what he was going to buy. The next afternoon, he took his new swim ring over to the water, and today he would play with his brothers and sisters. But he couldn't play ball, and he couldn't swim underwater, 
And although climbing up a ladder was fun, he just didn't want to jump. But he didn't want to be alone, so he decided to try one last time. One, two, two and a half, three, and sploosh! In he jumped. Help! He cried. Ugh, the little crocodile definitely hated water. It was cold, it was wet, and it was embarrassing. But then something strange happened. His nose began to tickle, and the tickle grew, and it grew, and it grew until I chew! He breathed fire. Hmm, does that sound like any crocodile you've ever heard of? This little crocodile didn't like water, and that's because he wasn't a crocodile at all. He was a dragon, and this little dragon wasn't born to swim. He was born to breathe fire. And he was born to fly. The end. Well, I'm glad that little dragon found his place and what he likes to do. All right, that was our last story for today, so we're gonna go ahead and sing our closing song, If You're Happy and You Know It. Ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Thanks for singing along with me, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.